You're listening to TalkTamingRadio.com. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTamingRadio.com, the management, the staff, or K&E World Network, LLC. Hello, hello, this is TalkTamerRadio.com, and you're listening to Stairway to Heaven with your host, Dr. Bates Claude Smith. And my guest will be my son, Apostle Kenneth Fletcher of the Living Word Christian Fellowship Church in Corsicana, Texas. And his topic will be, it is written. Uh, he, he's a beautiful, I've been down to his church in Texas, and it's a beautiful church. And uh, it's, it's really, really nice. And before we get started, let me say this. Uh, don't forget, November 13th is the release CD of The Keys of Harmony with Standing in the Need of Prayer and Looking Back Over My Life. That's November 13th, uh, 4 o'clock. And we are looking forward, looking forward to put, it's been a while since we put it out. It's still in the works. And when we come on, I'll let you know where to get it. Now, my son, my guest, uh, Apostle Fletcher, how are you? and always a blessing and a privilege to be on the Stairway to Heaven program. Okay, glad to have you. Very glad to have you. It's been about a year, haven't it? Yeah, it's been almost at least a year, almost a year, somewhere around that time frame. You're right. But it's a that we're back on with you, and we will hope that the Lord will do something with us and have a wonderful time of sharing today. Well, I know it's going to be a beautiful time because I can't wait to listen to the, uh, your topic because it sounds real... Uh, Beautiful. Could you explain to me uh, what it's all what it's all about? It's, writ- it's called. It is written. Am I correct? It, yes, sir. It is written, and I think many a times uh, that's something that one of the things that we as believers, especially in this hour, uh, you have a lot of people are reaching for a lot of different things. But one thing that we can be objective about is what is written in God's Word, and so once it is written. God himself will not change what has been written in the scripture, but he will make sure that what is written in the scripture comes to pass just as he allowed it to be written and foretold, you know, by the prophets of old. Oh, that sounds real. That sounds real beautiful. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you take it over and uh, let me get these shout outs out the way and you can have it. I'm going to, this is to my wife's mother, uh, Pat- Vances Patricia Smith and, Core Lab and all my other people. So go ahead and uh, at the other people like uh, and also the Stairway to Heaven is brought to you by the Keys of Harmony and Refuge Baptist Church and Praise Temple. So after I said all of that, I'm turning it over to Apostle Fletcher. Apostle Fletcher, you may proceed. All right. Well, again, thank you again, Dr. Bass, and again for all of you that are listening and that are watching uh, on the different platforms, the different. Uh, digital platforms. Uh, We thank God for the opportunity uh, to just be able to come and to share the Word of God uh, with you that are here, uh, that are are wanting to hear uh, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And particularly, at this moment, uh, God has graced me to be able uh, to come and to just share the Word of God uh, with many people, as many as will be able to hear it. And so we just want to encourage you Number one, in your walk of faith, in your journey of faith throughout life, because regardless of how many years we live on the earth, whether we live uh, a short time or whether we live a hundred plus years upon the earth, it is still relatively a short amount of time uh, based upon what the, the what God is in eternity. But what God has given to us is a written record of the things that he desires to come into fruition in the lives of those that will be called his people because of faith in Christ. And so it is a guide rail. It is a guardrail. It is, again, the lanes, so to speak, that we can make sure we stay in the correct lane that God wants us to stay in as we walk or go through uh, this journey. 
journey of life. And so there are many facets and many things of life. Many of you know uh, that I have had families, children, grandchildren, sometimes even great grandchildren. Uh, life can really have a lot of ups and downs, a lot of curves and turns, all kind of different things happen in life. But one thing that we always have, if we take heed to the word of God, we always have guardrails and guide rails to keep us on the path. And thank God, that's what the word of God is for. So we never have to really wonder in disillusionment what God thinks about something, you know, because whatever is written in his word is his thought concerning any circumstance, any situation, or any subject. So he does not deviate from what he's allowed to be written in the canon of scripture. And that's why I love this topic about it is written. Because right now we have, as you know, many of you know that are listening, we have so many different facets, you know, or parts, if you will, of the body of Christ. Uh, you have different denominations and different uh, uh, groups or whatever have you, uh, you know, different communities. And somewhat, we all may have our own kind of thought process of certain things and how certain things should go and the way we should do certain things. And that's all well and good in its place. But the wonderful thing that I love about what is written is because what is written is will never take sides, if you will, with any particular group. God himself stays completely objective to what he allowed to be written in his word. And the good news is he watches over that word to perform it and that he will never change what he said. And so, therefore, if we're even going to get to this place, even I believe this in this hour, where the body of Christ, the church will come into a unity and show the world that Jesus is Lord, it's going to have to be by you and I getting back to understanding what is written. So, when we just take our ideas, our concepts, what we're reaching for, what we're striving for, when it's based upon the revelation of what is written, now there is a coming together, right? Because right. everybody has opinions, right? Mm -hmm. We grew up differently. We grew up in different uh, places, different geographical places. We Sometimes we grew up in different economical situations, uh, even different race, racial situations. But when we come into the body of Christ, we have been born into a family that has one father, one Lord, one faith, <laughs> come on, one baptism, one God who is above all, over all, and through you all, okay? And so therefore, it doesn't matter where we come from, God is trying to bring us into the unity of oneness under the banner of the name, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that, so how do we become unified? How do really we become a body or a kingdom that is unified in purpose and unified in what we're striving for? Well, we must begin to reach for something that is objective and not subjective. What are you talking about, man of God? I'm saying that the word of God is not subjective, it is objective. In other words, God is not going to change what he said. And God is not going to change how he operates. We change many a times, and that is subjective. But God himself does not change. So you and I have to get to a place where we have come to a place of humility to where we can defer to what the Holy Spirit reveals through what is already written in the scripture. So let me take a text here and just for a moment and just want to show you something out of the book of Romans.
chapter number 15, and I'm not going to read all of the verses, but I just want to bring it to you just in a light so that we can see how important that the statement that it is written. Glory to God. And so Romans 15 and verse number three, and we'll start reading there. He says, for even Christ please not himself. Come on. But as it is written, there it is. There's one. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Now, come on. Verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, come on, were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Lord, have mercy. Now, the God of patience and, cons and consolation grant to you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that you may, with, hear what I said at the beginning, with what? With one mind, come on, and one mouth, glory to God, glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was the minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Here it is again. As it is written, glory to God, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. And again, he said, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles and laud him, all you people. And we're going to stop reading right there, but I want you to grab this text and understand that it is written that the reproaches of everyone fell upon Jesus. In other words, as the scripture very plainly says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one. But that he doesn't leave us there because he tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So how do we know that? Because it is written. Folks, if you didn't, if, the, if we didn't, my God, if we didn't have the word of God, many of us wouldn't even know what's right and what's wrong. I know mama and everyone tried to teach us the difference between what is right and what is wrong. And some folks do things and they don't think it's wrong. But when you see it clearly written, God's way of doing things and God's standard of living for humanity, now I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what is good and what is not good, what is moral and what is immoral, what is right and what is wrong. So we have these debates going on right now in society. There are those that want to, uh, uh, again, promote what they feel themselves is okay. And there are those that want to promote what they feel themselves is okay. Well, my question, who is correct? Who is right? So that's subjective. But if I can go to the word of God and God says, this is the way I see it. And the way I see it is the most important way to see it. Because I myself, talking about God saying, I myself am the final judge of all decisions. <laughs> Come on now. Uh, it doesn't matter how popular we may think a thing may be or how uh, well it is received in society, that's all well and fine, but God is the ultimate judge of all the actions of humanity. So he tells us it is written. And the good news is on this, the good news about that it is written is that he has given you and I the opportunity through our union with Jesus Christ to escape the negative side of the judgment that's coming on all humanity. Because regardless, friend, whether we want to call this old 
kind preaching or whatever you want to call it, everything that you and I do is going to be called into judgment by God. This is the whole duty of man. How do I know that? Because it is written. Fear God and keep his commandments. Glory to God. That's the only way I know that, right? So it doesn't matter what group I grew up with or what part uh, of the body of Christ that I've, I've been raised up in. I still have a responsibility to the one, God himself, that's going to be the judge of all the deeds that I do, whether they be good or whether they be bad. So as we get ready to wrap up this part, and we'll, we'll turn it back over to Dr. Bates here, but I want you to understand something. Jesus is our blessed hope. And he is our blessed hope because he is, again, the, the ratifier, if you will, of the covenant to the Jewish people. But now he says this about you and I. Who are these Gentiles that he talks about? And he says, the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Folks, the Gentiles are the nations of the earth, the non-Jewish people that have the opportunity to have the same blessing, the same covenant, the same favor as Father Abraham because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Because he says, I'm going to confess your name among the Gentiles. And then he says that you and I really have something to praise the Lord about. Glory to God, because we have been brought into the family and the commonwealth of Israel, the blessings of the Father, because Jesus Christ said, I'm going to confess your name. To the Gentiles. I'm not going to leave the nations of the earth out on the outside of this covenant, but I'm going to bring them in, glory to God, and we are going to be able to rejoice in kingdom blessings, share in the promise of Abraham, the promises made to the forefathers, that God will establish his kingdom and authority on the earth and because of our faith in Jesus Christ and nothing else we are now able to partake in that same benefit so folks that's why it's so important for you and I to find out what has been written in the scroll if you will because whatever is written God says this, and I don't want to quote a bunch of scriptures because, you know, like I told Dr. Bates, I could be on here for hours at a time. <laughs> but, but he's the holy men of God. No scripture is a private interpretation. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this canon of scripture that you and I have was not, not the brainchild on the idea of humanity trying to think of God. You understand what I mean? But it is God ha, revealing himself to humanity and giving them the right and the privilege and the responsibility to write out what he's revealing to them. So when I take these scriptures and I take them back to the author, who is God himself, the Holy Spirit, and ask him to breathe on my understanding, it is just as powerful if God is speaking to you just from heaven. So I'm here to say, tell you, glory to God, with all the authority of, the, of his word, that whatever has been written aforetime, from Moses all the way through the Pentateuch, all the way through the Old Testament, prophets all the way to Malachi, all the way through the New Testament, whatever has been written before, it is written for your learning so that through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, we can have hope in this crazy world. My friend, I want to encourage you to realize that I know you got great pastors. I know there's a great preacher here and there. And I know that there's different ones that are truly true men and women of God. 
but you got to learn how to get into this scripture and read it. Yes, take what they said, but go back and read it for yourself. Go back and dig it in a little bit. Have that Berean spirit like they had in the book of Acts when they listened to Paul, but then it said they went and they searched the scriptures daily. Glory to God, man. And they said, listen, is he telling us the truth or is he just making some stuff up? But no, as but when they searched the scriptures, it said, therefore, many of them believed. Why? Because they searched it out for themselves. They didn't just listen to a smooth-talking minister, which I'm not a, hear me, don't misunderstand me. But they said, okay, I hear what you're saying. But let me go into the scripture so the Holy Spirit can teach me what is written and what he's going to do with that. So I pray that you receive that again, and we're going to uh, talk, stop right there for just a moment uh, and, and, and get back connecting with Dr. Bates here so we can see what we're going to do next on the Stairway to Heaven uh, broadcast. Okay, thank you, Apostle Fletcher. Just stay right there, and then, and, yes, and uh, let's get back to you. Uh, say, well, you're listening to uh, Stay With You on, on Talk Team and Radio, and uh, I'll get we'll get back with uh, Apostle Fletcher uh, in a few. Um, I like to say them the shout out, give my shout outs to my wife, his lovely mother, Patricia Smith, and to the his sisters and uh, Scott and his family and Core Lab and some friends at Coraline, I'm giving them all a shout out, and plus the Keys of Harmony. And as I said, November 13th, we're having our release of Looking Back Over Our Life, a possibility, stairway to, uh, possibility uh, standing in the need of prayer. And that's November 13th at Praise Temple on Sunbury. Uh, give you give you a little more information next time we go around, but they will. I tell you who's gonna be there: the uh, divine angels. They're gonna be some mind dancers, and I believe some old groups gonna be there. So you know, if you have got nothing to do on uh, November thirteenth at four o'clock, please be there at our release CD. Also, I would like to say that uh, that this lesson that my uh, Apostle Fletcher is getting is very very good and very very interesting and uh you know i'm just gonna turn it back on him and, and let him uh, go ahead apostle all right well thank you again uh dr base again on talktainmentradio.com in columbus ohio again thank god for you uh opportunity this opportunity as well as we're also simulcasting many of you that are even watching on our uh Facebook and YouTube channel. So again, we thank God for all of you, and I pray that you're really grabbing hold of what we've been sharing, and that you also uh, remember about the dates, November 13th, uh, the CD release. Uh, again, uh, very important for everyone to be doing uh, what the Lord has anointed him to do. And I want, as we get ready to get back into this, I want to say this because for a long time, even as a preacher, I was trying to make everybody a preacher, right? Even in teaching them the word of God and whatever have you and, and doing uh, revivals and everything and, and all of the different things that God has used me to do in my in my 30 year journey of walking with the Lord. And, and God had to teach me in that time frame that I have not anointed everybody to preach. Now we are anointed to share the gospel and to live out this life as a representative of Christ, but everyone is not called to the same ministry, right? And, and particularly, everyone's not called to become a preacher of the gospel in that sense, right? But again, just as Dr. Bates was sharing, God has blessed him with the gift of musician, a, a gift of music, uh, all of the different things that he can do. So that he give, he has a grace for that. He has an anointing for that. And so we want to encourage him and inspire him to become uh, the fullness of what God has graced him and anointed him to do. So I had to learn this uh, in my zeal in my earlier ages that uh, I'm trying to make everybody into preachers. Well, no, that's not the case. But everyone has to know the scripture for themselves. So that whatever God has anointed and graced them to do, they 
will be able to do it with the utmost confidence, knowing that God is backing them up because they are following God's plan for their life. So as so that being said, I, admit, I stopped and I left off here out of Acts, the 17th chapter. And again, uh, want to really open this up to you talking about the Apostle Paul and when he's dealing with the scriptures because folks, again we have the written word it is written to bring us into a union with the living word who is Jesus Christ himself but without what is written we can be aiming at the wrong target many times people are aiming at the wrong subject and they're trying to do something for God that is really not even focusing on the right target. So Paul breaks it down here in Acts 17. And I just want to read this here. I'm going to try to read it quickly and, and move on. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. Come on. There was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three Sabbath days reason with them out of the scriptures. Now you got to watch it. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs to have suffered and risen again from the dead and that his, and that this Jesus whom I preach to you is, is Christ. Some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and uh, of the devout Greeks, a great multitude of the chief uh, women, not a few. Now we're going to skip down. You know what happened, but some of the other Jews, when all of the people came together, some of the other Jews began to get jealous and they began to contradict what Paul was saying. But verse number 10, and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews, there were more, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And, watch it, check it out. Search the scriptures daily. Oh, I love that. <laughs> they search the scriptures daily whether those things were so Therefore, many of them believe also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. What am I saying? Folks, I know that there are, if you will, charlatans out there. I know that there are people that have abused their power in the gospel. I get it. Even some that have called themselves apostles, right? And they just trying to abuse their authority. I'm an apostle, so you got to listen to me. Well, let me let me help let me help somebody. One of the ways you'll be able to walk in good a good balance of discernment is to have what we call the Berean spirit. Right here, he said the people of Berea they received the word, but watch what they did. They received the word with all readiness of mind, but then they went a step further. Glory to God. I think that's a good preaching word for somebody that we, the church needs to go a step further. Okay. Lord have mercy. Okay, Apostle, hold on, but I'm going to let you go. We're going we're gonna to continue on. This is okay, getting closely. You two, I would say that we're going to get you on the other half. Uh, this is Dr. Bates Claude Smith of Stairway to Heaven on YouTube, to your YouTube fans and with my son, Apostle Kenneth Fletcher. He's my guest out of course, Canada, Texas. And hey, we appreciate uh, appreciate you watching and listening. And uh, I'm going to say this to all my apostle, uh, YouTube friends, as I always say, the mind is nothing but a garden. What you put in it grows. And don't let no wooden no nickels or anything grow, okay? We'll see you on YouTube next time. Right. Stay there, Doc.